I just won bronze place in Buckstock and silver place in team class in this month's Quaker Cup 3. Against formidable competition, I was able to get into the finals with these cars, and yeah, I wanted to show that I could use the FMA chassis, the Korean mock frame, to get into the finals and fare well in that race on a track that was, ooh, pretty challenging. It was a smaller track, but it was extremely loaded with lots of surprises. Two lane changers, lots of twists, turns, right angle turns, like the like the death turns in the AAA Hobbies races. Yeah, pretty cool. And there's a little jump right off of the incline. Whoa, pretty cool. So yeah, that kind of track, that, that challenging kind of track, small, but challenging, but fun, it's enough to throw off a lot of FMA chassis or any cars that have 3.5 to 1 gear ratios. So what did I do to keep this car on the track? I had to slow down the speed because my original motor in here just kept causing this car to course out all the time. So I changed it to a slower motor, one of my slowest motors I had in my arsenal. And this was then able to stay on the track with the right battery voltage. Yes, pretty cool. I just had to make sure that everything was well lubricated, well oiled, and yeah, then it was good to go. And I had to make sure that my voltage was set within very specific parameters, especially depending on which lap I started. So yes, lap three as a starting lap was a killer circuit. That was like so difficult for my car and some other cars as well. Other people liked lap two as a starting point. I liked lap one because I was practicing with all of my cars on lap one starting off. So yeah, I was faring pretty well on lap one and yeah, it was. but remember everybody, always play test your cars on all three or five lanes as much as you can. You can't just rely on always getting your car on a certain lap. So yes. So yes, so I slowed this car down and with the speedy low fix tires, this was like, it was a pretty fast car. And yeah, it was one of those cars in which it didn't seem like it was that fast off the initial acceleration, but it got faster and faster over time. So yeah, this is one of those cars where you have to just wish it to be slower as time progressed because if this car goes a little too fast then it might jump right off the lane changer and yeah you'll course out but yeah i was quite happy with my placement there at least i got into the finals that was cool and you'll see here yeah <laughs> the winners of this yeah i think nolan was the winner and yeah rob was second and i was third so rob had his awesomely awesome lord spirit car and that was a car that was like it had all the good parts on it to stay on the track but his car is like really fast and truth be told it was faster than this car in this particular race because i had to like keep dumbing down the speed of this car he dialed his car in and yeah he did a great job with fine-tuning everything and getting everything to stay on the track. And the final part, the final end of the, of the race, he, he crossed the finish line and yeah, he was like a nose ahead of me and yeah, he got second place. Pretty cool. So, tune class. Tune class, I did fairly well in tune class. I got silver place. I could have gotten gold, but what I did here was I played it very conservatively. So I took off the tape off of my brake because with the tape on, it was sort of a gamble. So the gamble being, depending on what lane I started at, I could either course out, it wasn't so often that I coursed out with this car, but I could course out potentially or stay on the track. And without the tape, this would guarantee that I would stay on the track like all the time. However, around the final bends, the final twisties, this slowed down a bit because of this brake right here. And that enabled the other car that Dave ran to speed ahead of me at that very final turn. So yeah. Unfortunately, I was like ahead most of the time with this car and then suddenly his car shot out from out of nowhere on that final turn. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's what happens when you play things conservatively. Sometimes you want to try to get to be first place, but you don't want to be third, right? So, so what can you do to try to make sure that you're in one of those top two spots? Well, you have to kind of play it conservatively then because you don't want to course out and get third. This is a pretty well-built car. It's built like a tank. It's a heavy car. It stays on the track, especially with alkaline batteries. Uh, a lot of People might be wondering, well, why can't you put rechargeable batteries? I did put rechargeable batteries in and it actually stayed on the track too, but it didn't have the same vibration control that it has with alkalines. When it has alkalines, it's a tank of a car and it could knock into the sidewalls and cause other cars to course out and, and stay right in its slot. So this is like a really, really awesome car. Not the fastest car, but it's quick and yeah, it does its job. And truth be told, had I not ripped off that tape, maybe I would have been gold, but that's the chance that you have to take sometimes. Sometimes you have to take that chance. So yeah, pretty cool. So the Quaker Cup this month gave out these little cute little trophies right here. Pretty cool. And the prizes. Okay, so for bronze in box stock, I won this. It's a VZ chassis, a red VZ chassis. Yay, pretty cool. And for silver in tune class, I won this FMA chassis. Yay, and this orange is a fluorescent orange chassis. Pretty cool. And all of you know that fluorescent chassis 
are slightly lighter in weight than regular plastic chassis. Pretty cool, yes. So use that to your advantage. Now some of the parts that you might find in fluorescent chassis might be a little more fragile than non-fluorescent chassis. So what I would suggest you do is to pick and choose various parts from your fluorescent chassis kit, like you see here, and incorporate them into a non-fluorescent chassis body so that when you build your car, you have that nice dual duotone color. And yeah, then you can have like lighter parts here and there as needed. So pretty cool. That gives you like a wonderful color contrast so that not everything is just a single color like black or gray or white or something like that. So pretty cool. Yeah, extra fancy parts. Pretty cool. Yay. So yes, everybody, next month, or this coming month actually, yeah, this coming month, next month, there's going to be a slew of races that I'm going to be competing in. There's going to be Hobby Town, there's going to be AAA, and also the Unity Cup. DXN is hosting the Unity Cup, and I'm sending a couple of cars out there for races there. Pretty darn cool. So I'm sending one of my son's version of Eagle, and I've souped it up a little bit so that, I mean, his car was already, it's already faster than my car, yeah. And I just had to like tune it a little bit and make it a little bit faster. Pretty cool. And the other car, I'm sending Venom version one the one with the body damper made of car catcher material. It flips up a lot more and flaps a lot more. Pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see how those fare in the Unity Cup. Pretty cool. So everybody, if you love this video, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you. Bye.